Yo, what's up, you freaking nerds? Today I'm gonna show you how to dial in a bass tone that's perfect for pop punk, rock, and then I'm also gonna show you how I mix it. So let's get into it. I have this raw bass tone right here. It already sounds great. It has some pretty fresh strings on it and the bass is perfectly in tune and the part makes sense with everything else going on. So I think this is a perfect example of a good bass DI that we can use to get this tone and get this mix today. So when I think of bass guitar, I usually think of it in three parts. You have your clean DI, which is really holding it down and making it sound organic and like a real human playing it. And then you have your distortion channel, which is really just the vibe and the grit of the track. And that can change a ton depending on what kind of band you're working with or what sort of song this is and then you also have the low end of your bass which I always suggest you mix on headphones or if you have a good sub or you have some really good speakers I think it's really important to make sure you reference your low end on something like that so there's two ways to do this the first being that you can have three separate bass tracks all being the same DI but one track is DI the second track is the distortion and the third track is the sub or the second way, which is what we're gonna be doing today, is we're gonna do it all on one track, and I'm gonna show you how I go about doing all those things that we talked about in one track. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Amplitude, let's see how that sounds. Way too loud, kinda sounds like Motorhead, kinda sick, but won't work for this track. So we're gonna get rid of that head, and we're gonna turn on my favorite head that I've ever used in any studio, which is this Ampeg head with two inputs here. I guess in this case, it doesn't matter if you're using an Ampeg with one or two inputs because Amplitude won't let me choose two DIs into one splitter, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to have two of the same head here. And the idea is this bottom head is gonna be your clean DI channel, which will be your clean signal and will also blend in the DI into that. And then this top one here, we'll make sure that's the distortion channel. So first let's bypass channel two, which would be this bus here. Let's see how this amp sounds with raw dog, nothing on it. Honestly, it sounds great, but we need to dial it in a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to the cab and we're gonna pick our mics. 57, that's cool. Let's go for a ribbon on that second mic. Something a little bit warmer to balance out the high end of that. And let's go to the placement. Chuck it right in the middle. Honestly, that sounds pretty good. Um, let's go to the room. I think that a little bit of ambience on bass can work, especially if it's a small room like this cab sim room. Um, let's check it out. Cool, I think it sounds great. I think it gives it a little bit of width and a little bit of clarity because the room mics are so clear. You do need to be careful with this because I think it did get a little bit phasey, but we're gonna address that when we add in our subs later on. So here's our clean channel one more time. Sounds awesome. Cool, we're gonna blend in some DI. Sounds awesome. Now we're gonna add in the second channel. First, I'm gonna mute the entire clean channel so we can just hear the distorted channel. So that's already on. Let's make sure that our mics are the same because we don't want any weird phasey stuff going on. So let's go through some distortion channels. I know what I'm kind of going for already, but I just wanna try some other stuff just to have fun with it. Cool, here's a big muff. Yo, that might actually sound really cool. I usually go for like an overdrive or a tube screamer or something, but let's check it out, blend it in with the other amp. It's a little aggressive for this. I think if the guitars had a little bit more mid-range distortion, it might sound cool because uh, that fuzz is so fizzy on the top end, it might peek through a little bit. But for something like this, we might wanna go for a Tube Screamer. So that's a pretty nice tone right there.
All right, let's blend it in with that other track. I think that sounds awesome. I think that it needs a little bit more clank, so we're gonna adjust the settings on the distortion channel head. Cool, that's sounding pretty aggressive. Let's check it out in the mix and I'll blend in that distortion channel to taste. I think it's sounding pretty good, but it's sounding a little bit messy. So what I want to do is I want to go into the clean channel and I want to turn up the DI a little and sort of balance out the levels of the distortion and the DI. I think we're very close. I think that sounds good. I think the only thing it's missing is a little bit of control all the way through and it's missing that low end element. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna mix it through uh, Amplitude here because there is a bunch of outboard gear. We're gonna grab this LA-2A, put it after both the signals are activating. <laughs> I think that sounds great. It's clamping it down a little bit. Next thing we're gonna add is this Pultec EQ. We're gonna add a little bit of low end and a little bit of high end. There it is, so about 60 hertz. That's gonna be bringing up the thump of the bass and making it really pop through the mix, making it sound like the actual bass element of the mix. And then we're gonna add some mid to high uh, EQ on this as well, here we go. I actually think that 3K sounded the best, boosting the mid-range, especially with that guitar on top that's sort of just like clean and high end. It's gonna cut through the middle of the mix, straight down the center a little bit better. Next thing I wanna do is do some corrective EQ to make room in the master. We're just gonna take out some lows and some highs. Let's check it out. All right, I'm gonna loop this here and then I'm gonna go through and add some EQ points here of things that I think could really make this bass sound special. It's not so much correcting the EQ now, it's just sort of adding a little bit of personality to the bass. So here we go.
So I think everything besides the low end here sounds awesome. So we have a cut, anything above that is gone, anything below 30 is gone, and then we're cutting the thump, we're boosting the mids, we're cutting the scratch, and we're adding some highs. I think it sounds good, I'm gonna do a SSL EQ now. I also really like the compressor on this. I want a little bit more clarity on this, so I'm gonna boost some 8K. And then I'm gonna tame the bass a little bit by throwing the threshold all the way up and I'm gonna control the gain reduction actually with the ratio. So I think that sounds great. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our bass. So that's really evening out the low end across the bass throughout the song. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add Soothe 2. What this is, is an intelligent EQ that's looking for any harsh tones coming through and it's gonna make sure that it can spike it out. So I'm gonna show you what it's getting rid of first and then we'll dial it in. And to be honest, what I really want out of this is I want it to control that low end a little bit more. So I'm gonna make sure it focuses there. As you can see, as it changes notes, the fundamental of the low end changes because that's literally what the note is, a frequency spiking. So I'm gonna make sure that it's grabbing a pretty wide selection of that so that when it hits a lower note and the frequency is a little bit louder than the other notes, it's gonna tame it down just a little bit. I'm also gonna turn it up around 4K where all the scratches are happening when you're picking. And then I'm gonna turn down the attack because I don't want it to take away any of the pick attack that's happening there. Just the resonant frequency. All together. And off. So I think that sounds great. That's clamping the low end and it sounds awesome. Another way that you can go about approaching low end is you can duplicate whatever sort of tone, whatever sort of bass you got going on. And what you can do, you can make sure that you cut out everything besides, you know, anything below, let's say a hundred. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, so we wanna just grab that low end. So we'll call this low end bass. So right now you just have your scratchy distortion track without much low end. And then you have your sub channel that you can blend into taste. Sometimes that sounds better than our bass. It's a more controlled way to do it. I always wanna make sure that I clamp down on that low end to make sure that as the notes are changing, it's not spiking in different directions. So this is the sort of thing that you need to check while the other instruments are going. Cool, and that sounds great. I'm gonna go back to my way, how I usually do it. And the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna duck the bass every time the kick hits. So I'm gonna send an aux from bus 15 and we're gonna turn on a multiband compressor and I already have something set up to do kick, duck, bus 15. We're gonna set the key input to 15. So anything going to bus 15 is being sent here, which is the kick drum. And you'll see this compressor activating every single time the kick hits.
that's a good way to make sure your base isn't getting in the way of the kick every single time it's hitting. And there's not a buildup of low frequencies when you have everything playing at the same time. So here we go, I'll let it roll through one more time. That's how I got my bass tone. You got your clean track, you got your distortion track, you have your sub being controlled, you have your whole bass being controlled, you have soothe taking out any sort of weird frequencies, and then you have your bass ducking whenever the kick is hitting. And I think with all those things together, you get a perfect blend for bass tone. Let's check it out. Okay, so that's it for this video. I really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I've been wanting to do this YouTube thing since I was like 12 years old, so I'm finally being consistent with it and putting up videos. It's awesome that some of my videos are starting to pick up a little bit. It feels really good that all the work I'm putting in is getting recognized now. So with that, keep creating, keep making music, and I'll see you guys next time.